Survivor 46 is here, and so is On Fire, the only official Survivor podcast, and we have a twist this season. The winner of Survivor 45, D. Vyadaris, will be joining us every week. We're going behind the scenes of the biggest moments, the how and the why things happen, and the strategy and analysis you can only get from someone like me, a Survivor winner. Listen to On Fire, the official Survivor podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. This episode is brought to you by Paramount Plus. Ewan McGregor stars as Count Alexander Rostov in A Gentleman in Moscow, the new limited series based on the best selling novel. Stream it on March 29th with the Paramount Plus with Showtime plan. Visit ParamountPlus.com to try it free. Hello, hello. Welcome back to Peak Northwest, an outdoors and travel podcast by the Oregonian and Oregon Live, dedicated to the adventure and exploration of our beautiful Pacific Northwest. I'm Jamie Hale. And I'm Vicki Connor. Together, we take you to some of the most beautiful and interesting destinations in our region, discussing where to go, what to do, and places to see. And today, we're headed to an unlikely snorkeling and scuba diving destination, not in the ocean, but high in the Cascade Mountains. Yeah, that place is called Clear Lake, which is one of many Cascade Mountain lakes found near Mount Washington in Central Oregon. It's a really popular destination for boating, hiking, fishing, but its crystal clear waters also make it a popular place to go diving. Jamie, have we ever had an episode dedicated to snorkeling or scuba diving? Oregon's not usually a place where you do a lot of snorkeling. This is not the Florida Keys. It's it's not Baja. <laughs> like you, you don't like it's a place where you go to the beach and you look at the water. You know, <laughs> you don't usually get in it. But so to have a place in Oregon where you can do that sort of thing, very unusual. Yeah, I have been snorkeling once, and that was in Hawaii, uh, <laughs> where it was nice and warm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I don't know that this is a place where it's going to be warm. Um, we'll, we'll get into that here, but I mean, this, because I've not done this before and Vicky, because you have not either, um, we wanted to bring on someone today who has been to Clear Lake to do some of this stuff. So, um, to continue our, my Epic adventure series, We've brought on Haley Nelson, a freelance journalist and photographer and videographer who did a wonderful story for the Oregonian and here is Oregon about seeing Oregon's clear lake from a scuba diver's point of view. Haley, thank you so much for coming on and joining. Hi, thanks so much for having me. So Haley, how did you become interested in Clear Lake? To be honest, I found about Clear Lake while talking about story ideas with Teresa Mahoney a video editor at the Oregonian. Um, she sent me a link to the photos of the scuba diver just suspended as if in midair amongst these preserved trees. And I knew I had to get out there myself to see it. So uh, Clear Lake is in the Willamette National Forest, about an hour drive northwest of Bend, which is where I am based. And I could head out there on my own and, um, you know, poke my GoPro beneath the surface, but I, I knew I had to go further. So um, that's when I started Googling diving shops in, in Oregon. And to my surprise, they're all over the place in the mountains, not just along the coast. These divers don't just explore the ocean. They dive to the, the depths of these high elevation lakes to um, gain experience, to take lessons, and to uh, see unique features such as uh, this preserved forest in, in Clear Lake. It's, it sounds so cool. You, you're talking about the words preserved forest in a lake. W w w so paint a picture for us here. So you're, you're in the water there. What, what, is, what are you seeing? What does that look like? Um, would it help to hear a little bit about how the lake was formed in the first place? Definitely. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Yeah. So, you know, thousands of years ago, we know that Oregon is a highly, um, was a highly volcanically active area. 
the Cascades are all volcanoes. So um, thousands of years ago, um, one of these volcanoes erupted and the lava flowed down to the Mackenzie River and um, blocked the flow. And as when the water was um, basically dammed off by the, the lava flow, that super, super cold water coming out of the underground springs filled up to that area and um, the water preserved the tree trunks that were along that former river. So it's, so that's what you're seeing under the water there. So cool. <laughs> what, what, how, do you like have an idea of like how old are these trees? How old is this preserved forest? According to the U.S. Forest Service, it was about, it was about 1000 BC when Sand Mountain erupted. That's crazy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I, uh, I connected with Central Oregon Diving Shop, which is in, located in Bend. And I found out when they would be doing a group excursion out to Clear Lake to get in some practice with high elevation diving and cold water diving, uh, because that's a whole different beast than going out to the, you know, tropical islands (laughs) to look at fish. Um, So uh, they um, outfitted me with some heavy duty wetsuits. I originally thought I could use my own wetsuit I already had from living in California, which was a a three and two millimeter thick wetsuit for, you know, 60 degree water. (laughs) But the water in this lake is low 40s, where you need at least one layer of seven millimeter neoprene. So um, I went to the shop, they gave me a two, two piece, seven millimeter wetsuit, it's like a overalls basically, and then a jacket on top, plus a hood, plus boots, plus gloves. <laughs> and even with all of that, you still start to lose dexterity in your fingers after about 20 to 30 minutes, because it's that cold. Oh my God. Easing into the water was um was shocking (laughs) like you know in your head it's going to be cold (laughs) but then it slowly fills the wetsuit and (laughs) I had to force myself to keep walking forward (laughs) so Haley obviously uh the group you're with was scuba diving but you decided to not scuba dive you snorkeled is that correct that's right I'm not a certified diver I um wouldn't even be able to dive even if I wanted to because I have no training Um, but I wanted for the video to have a sense of scale for these huge preserved tree trunks under the water and I wanted a sense of just how far you can see in in the clearness of it all Um, you know I couldn't dive very far because of how buoyant the suit was so I'm up at the very surface with my camera, um, but I could see them clear as day all the way down at the the bottom of the lake. That's wild. Is there, do you have a sense of like, what, what about this uh, and the way the lake was formed? Um, like, why is this water so clear in particular? It's partially because of the temperature. The water coming up out of these springs is too cold for, um, algae and like little microorganisms to flourish where you would see, you know, murky water in a, in a warmer swamp or, or lake. So, um, yeah, we do have some varieties of trout living there, but, um, that's, I think that's about all you can see floating through the the water. (laughs) So uh, the group you're with who is scuba diving, do they, scuba dive this area regularly for a certain reason or there's like what what brings them to clear lake frequently part of the reason why groups visit clear lake on a regular basis is to um, gain experience for divers based in central oregon who want to then um, use their certification in other locations around the world in, in 
tropical locations along the Oregon coast, but this is a conven- more convenient than driving all the way out to the coast for, for practice hours. And also because it is such a unique environment to dive in. I don't know of any other underwater forest that you can swim through. <laughs> Just reading your story about this and seeing your pictures, um, this is one of those things where I feel like it's it's so hard to to explain in just words, but you have this great quote from someone who says, um, in some places, because of the white sand and craters on the bottom, it feels like you're on the moon. And so we have this like sense of like this moon imagery. You mentioned people sort of floating, suspended, and yet there's also these this preserved ancient forest and these crazy clear waters. I mean, it sounds sort of unbelievable, this, this landscape. Yes, definitely. Uh, going back through the footage, I'm taken right back to that moment where you feel like you're in another world. It's very ethereal. Yeah, so even for you, just sort of buoyant at the top, not even going down that deep, you kind of get, I, it's sort of almost, I imagine kind of like flying over this 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 scene, this this scenery. Um, I, I, I really want to know like more about like what what was that like? What did that feel like? to be up there? What was it like to look down upon this crazy landscape? Part of me was, I was a little disappointed that I was so buoyant. I did, I wanted to dive down there and um, be further enveloped in that environment. I could not. That was the most buoyant suit setup I had ever experienced. So there was no way, no chance I was getting any part of me submerged at that point. Yeah, seeing the, the bottom of the lake so clearly below me, it really kind of beckons. And that's why I wanted to be in the water instead of just on the surface in a kayak or in a one of the other boats that you can rent at the resort there. It's a whole different experience being uh, below the surface. So take us into your mind as a photographer and videographer. You are trying to capture this, even though you can't go down and dive further and you're buoyant. What is going through your mind about what you're trying to capture in the moment? Um, As I said before, um, one of my biggest priorities was to um, have these other humans in the frame to give that sense of scale with the trees and give a perspective on how far you can see through this clear water. Um, another thing I wanted to do was uh, get out the drone, since it's a national forest, and um, get the perspective from above as well, uh, because you can even see to the bottom flying overhead. Um, it's that clear. <laughs> oh my gosh! Um, <laughs> Come on. And some of the shots in the video, you can you. I wanted to show the divers themselves, but I didn't account for all the bubbles coming up from their tanks. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the the clouds of of bubbles coming to the surface between the trees, <laughs> and uh, that was pretty exciting as as the drone pilot out there. <laughs> it was a photographer's dream. <laughs> and how many people were scuba diving that you were capturing? I want to say there were about twelve people there. They were broken up into smaller groups, and there was even another group from a different dive shop at the other end of the lake doing their own underwater expedition. So it's clearly a very popular spot. Um, And it was, it was in August. So I, I'm sure they wanted to get out there when it was 90 degrees so that once they got out of that freezing water, they could uh, soak up some sunshine, (laughs) get that feeling back in their fingers. (laughs) I imagine this is like a summertime activity, preferably. I mean, even just in the winter, it's going to be way colder or it's just like snowy um, or hard to access. But you, you, it seems like most people do this like in the summertime. Uh, yes. Yeah. I think it would okay. be, um, it could be pretty miserable <laughs> if you were trying to go, <laughs> go dive in that water in the middle of winter. So Haley, how long were you in the water? No more than 30 minutes. (laughs) It was brutal. (laughs) What's crazy is I feel like when people talk about snorkeling, there's certain image comes into mind of like 
you're in a bathing suit, you're in tropical waters, you know, you're seeing weird little clownfish or stuff like that. And it, but what, everything you're talking about, it sounds like it's like not even snorkeling. It's like, it's not like we need a new word for like putting on a wetsuit and going into a lake in the mountains. That's like 40 degrees. You can only stay in there for 30 minutes. Like that's a whole other experience. Like, is it even fair to call this snorkeling <laughs> at this point? High elevation. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what else you could call it. Masochism? No, just kidding. <laughs> Masochistic snorkeling. Uh... <laughs> no, it was really dreamy. It was really dreamy in there. It was worth it. Okay. That's what I was wondering is like, what's the balance between like really cool, amazing experience and oh my God, this is like so difficult to do? Well, you know, it all comes down to how special the experience was. I mean, how unique. When you think of the mountains, you think of mountain biking. You think of taking a little hike around this lake. But the fact that you are immersing yourself in a new underwater world, totally worth the, the cold <laughs> temperatures. Haley, the, the group that you are capturing, were they all really experienced? Were they taking anyone like for their first dive? What was it like for that group? Um, they had all been diving before. Um, so I think some of them were repeats. Like they had come to Clear Lake the year before um, and wanted to experience it again. And then I think there were some folks coming in from out of town, from around the Portland area, for some destination diving. Well, so for folks who are listening to this and thinking, wow, I really want to try this, um, despite everything you said about the challenges and all that, but who hear your description, I really want to try it, whether it's scuba diving or snorkeling, what advice do you have for, for them on where to begin on, on trying to figure out how, how to make this happen? Is it, is it a matter of like getting your diving certification going through this or can you call up a shop and be like, you know, Hey, I want to rent some gear to go snorkeling at clear Lake. Can people just like do that for snorkeling? Yes, absolutely. I mean, okay. they let me do it. <laughs> 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 they were very welcoming, even though I was going to tag along with their group to this lake uh just as a spectator basically as a tourist um, they were um more than happy to set me up with all the gear that i didn't even know that i needed um all the the thick wet suits and the special fins that can go over the boots um i had my own mask and snorkel but they have that equipment as well i would say any dive shop around uh, Oregon could help you get started if you're interested. There's the Central or Oregon Diving in Bend. There was a shop in Salem. From my experience, it was a very welcoming community. So don't be afraid to uh, dive in. <laughs> I have to ask, Haley, are you now considering getting your diving certification after this or did you just like freeze your limbs off and you're like not <laughs> no I would totally do it I would definitely be interested the challenge the only the biggest challenge is that there are so many things to explore in Oregon it's hard to decide where to start <laughs> I just learned to ski last year then I went accompanied with these scuba divers I did stargazing uh, at the tops of mountains. I went mountain biking. I went backpacking with my dog. I've, yeah, there's, it's just endless. <laughs> Hard to know where to start. <laughs> Fair enough. I feel the same way. <laughs> <laughs> well, Haley, thank you so much for coming on and joining with us and, and talking all about this. Um, you know, I, I, it just sounds like such a dreamy place. Clear Lake, of course, is a great spot to go, regardless of whether you're snorkeling or scuba diving or doing anything else. I guess I did want to ask, did you get up to anything else while you were out there? Any other um, fun side trips or, or anything else around Clear Lake? I didn't that day. I was at the time freaking out a little bit about my SD card, so I didn't fit in any side trips. But I think 
uh, Saheli Falls is nearby. And um, of course, even staying at the lake, you can, um, you can hike around it, you can paddle through it, you can fish, you can camp. Um, so there's plenty of opportunity to um, do more while you're out there. Well, Haley, thanks again for coming on. Yeah, it was my pleasure. Thank you. Jamie, what do you think? Are you going to go uh, go out to Clear Lake and uh, <laughs> freeze your fingers and toes off now? It's it's a hard pass for me personally. Uh, all respect to everyone who does it. I love the idea. I love, I love that people do it. I love they're doing it. Absolutely not for me. Um, I would love to camp at Clear Lake. I've done the hike around the lake. It's very beautiful. Um, even from the shore, you can kind of see into the, the clearness of the lake, depending on the cloud cover, the sunlight, all that. But um, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous spot to hike around. I was there in the fall and got some like fall color around Clear Lake against the lava rock. I mean, come on, it's a beautiful spot. What, what about you, Vicky? I think I've been there once when it was like super overcast. Mm -hmm. And at that point, it was not looking very clear to me because of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'd love to go back in the summer. Um, I'd be down to, you know, freeze a little bit and snorkel. I don't have a diving certification, obviously. Um, and I think I would start somewhere a bit more tropical. <laughs> but this sounds super cool. I've never seen or just experienced the type of landscape that Haley described. So my interest is piqued. Okay. Well, you have to let us know when you do it. <laughs> if I make it out alive. That's right. <laughs> Well, folks, that will do it for us for this week. Until next time, you can watch our videos on the Oregonians YouTube channel and view all of our travel and outdoors coverage on OregonLive.com slash travel, as well as HereIsOregon.com. Please leave us a rating or review if you enjoy the show. And if you want to support this podcast, as well as our local journalism, please consider a subscription to Oregon Live. You can find details at OregonLive.com slash pod support. Also, if you're a fan of the show and are interested in potentially sponsoring it, you can get in touch with our marketing people at advertise at Oregonian.com. This episode of the show is produced by me, Vicki Connor, alongside Jamie Hale. Stay safe and happy travels, everyone. Until next time, we leave you with this 10 seconds of Zen. <laughs>